in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. This ceremony includes both spring and summer graduates in the college. We congratulate spring graduates for completing their degrees this week and our summer graduates who will soon complete their studies. At this time, Quinn Tipping, a senior in music from Des Moines, will lead us in the singing of the national anthem. Alex Dozer, a sophomore in mathematics from Mechanicsville, Iowa, is providing accompaniment this evening. Please stand. seated. I would like to recognize the faculty who are present here tonight. Seated on the, chair, on the stage here are the department chairs or their representatives. You will be introduced to them later in the program as they greet students in their res respective departments and programs. The students we are honoring here today did not accomplish their goals alone. Family, friends, teachers, and many others have helped students be successful. We want to thank you for your support. Would all the parents of today's graduates please stand so that we can honor you with a round of applause. and thank you for sharing your sons and daughters with us for the years that they've been here on campus. In a couple of minutes, I will have the pleasure of introducing our evening speakers. But before I do that, I want to just visit with you graduates for a few moments. When I'm not wearing my dean's hat, I'm a scientist, specifically a theoretical physicist. Resilience in the science world, in simple terms, is the ability to recoil or spring back into shape after being bent, stretched, or compressed. Now, I don't want to talk about science here tonight, especially you're going to get a demonstration a little later on. Uh, but I do want to comment on a more familiar term, namely human resilience, the ability to withstand and recover quickly from difficult conditions and not only to overcome challenge and adversity, but to turn it into an opportunity. As each of you graduates starts the next chapter of your life, please remember, life has its ups and downs. And your character and personal strength will be measured by your resilience and how you handle those challenges. And you wouldn't be here tonight if you hadn't, um, if you hadn't handled some of these challenges. 
Some exams went well, some of them didn't go so well. Friendships broke up, maybe you lost someone, and still you're here tonight. Challenges and adversity can hit even those with the best laid plans and the best intentions. You need to be prepared for what life brings, a willingness to be open to new thoughts, new experiences, and the most unexpected places. Here are three things to keep in mind. First, be ready for what life throws your way. Use your poise, your character, your education, and the leadership abilities that you learned here at Iowa State University, not only to triumph over life's challenges, but to turn adversity around and mold it into something better. Second, be ready and embrace these unexpected changes in your life. Realize that success, attainment, money, happiness, as well as job titles, places of residence, bank accounts, come in all shapes and sizes. Be mindful of what is important for you and for your family and friends. Third, be ready to enjoy the best years of your lives. Opportunities come in the most unlikely of places at the most unlikely of times. So remember, grab opportunity when it comes your way. And hold on, because it's going to be a wild ride. Thank you. Our student speaker here tonight is a senior from Apple Valley, Minnesota, graduating summa cum laude with a major in meteorology. Joshua Allen is president of the ISU student chapter of the American Meteorological Society. The 75-member group was named National Student Chapter of the Year last fall. Josh and his fellow members led many outreach activities in the community, including winterizing low-income family homes, preparing storm readiness activities in elementary and high schools, and renewing ISU's action plan in case of severe weather. He has also helped provide academic support to his fellow meteorology students. Josh has been a classroom leader for all the meteorology courses, as well as some physics and some chemistry courses. He's a member of Phi Beta Kappa. That's an honorary society for the strongest students in liberal arts and sciences. He's a member of the Honors Program and a recipient of multiple academic scholarships and awards. Most recently, he was awarded a very, very competitive and very prestigious national award namely a National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. Um, that means that Josh is really one of the top students in the whole country. After graduation, Josh will complete his research at Iowa State in the summer, and then he will attend State University of New York, SUNY Albany, this fall. There, he will study hurricane intensification. And yes, they don't have hurricanes in New York, but a very, very good program. Please join me in welcoming Josh Allen to the podium as your student speaker. Thank you, Dean Schmidtman, for your wonderful introduction. A warm welcome to the families of the graduates. Like my family, I am sure many of you no longer are financially responsible for your graduate, so congratulations and enjoy the extra cash. <laughs> A very warm welcome as well to the graduating class of 2013. It seems we have all managed to pass our classes despite many of us uh, stepping our feet over the zodiac in the Memorial Union. Many congratulations on this very exciting day in your lives. For me, being a meteorology major at Iowa State has been the best decision I ever made. Four years ago, I would have never, ever, 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 like, ever. I would have never predicted my unique experiences as a student. I'm sure many, if not all of you, can say the same. However, there was a time when I was not sure if I should have attended Iowa State, and that time was freshman year when I left my family and, yes, my girlfriend, back in the state where we say bag instead of a bag and a wagon instead of a wagon. <laughs> when I arrived at Iowa State, my attitude quickly changed. I enrolled in our department's learning community where I met really awesome fellow meteorology majors. 
After adapting to Iowa, opportunities approached me time after time. I participated in a research project as a freshman and was a teaching assistant for our meteorology course on campus. I even had my first roommate from a different country, his name was Su Young, um, who was an exchange student from China. As I helped him adapt to the American culture, he quickly became one of my best friends. Then things quickly did change. As junior year rolled around, my high school girlfriend of almost three years sadly broke up with me for another guy, which doesn't sound so bad, but if you have experienced it, you know it's kind of stressful on the mind. <laughs> Obviously, many of you have experienced this. <laughs> Only a week later though, Su Young, my roommate, went to the doctor after discovering a lump on his body. Trained medical staff around Ames had no idea what it was, so Su Young insisted to go to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. After many tests, uh, the Mayo Clinic diagnosed Su Young with cancer. Thankfully, the cancer was in stage one, but this cancer was extremely rare. And I, being with Su Young, when he received that shocking call from the doctor was heartbreaking. As an exchange student, he did not have any family to lean on for comfort, so ultimately his parents had to come to Iowa. He had to drop out of school and had chemotherapy treatments in Rochester. I vividly remember visiting Su Young in the hospital. His normal, energetic, lively self was planted in a hospital bed, looking very weak and lifeless. To gain, con to gain motivation to continue with my life, I thought about my inspirations. What inspired me was Su Young's constant hope. He always told me he would overcome the cancer and be back at Iowa State in no time. His parents' bravery, expired, bravery inspired me, who traveled from China with partial English to be with their son. After six months of intense chemotherapy treatments, Su Young was exhausted. But the medical staff told him he was cancer free. And Su Young is sitting with all of us tonight as a returning Iowa State student without cancer. I believe it is important to look at your inspirations to get through the tough times in life. Think about your inspirations, graduates. I'm inspired by my meteorology professor, Dr. Mike Chen, who comes to Agronomy Hall every evening because he mentors students all day. I am inspired by my New Testament teacher, Dr. Hector Avalos, who is one of the smartest people I have ever met and has the Bible memorized so he doesn't have to bring any notes to class. <laughs> who inspires me is the Dairy Science Club, they create and sell ice cream that tops Dairy Queen and Cold Stone. <laughs> who inspires me is, of course, Serena Williams, who severely injured her foot, her foot and had a blood clot in her lungs, but came back to the tennis world to win Wimbledon, the US Open, the Olympics, and the end of the year championships all in the same year. Who inspires me is the Campanile musician, who undoubtedly inspires every Iowa State student and faculty member as she plays Lady Gaga's Bad Romance. <laughs> Who inspires me is the Jimmy John's delivery person. <laughs> they can get a sandwich and a drink to somebody on a bike in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> who inspires me is the Iowa State student who created the Iowa State Secret Admirers page on Facebook. <laughs> uh, th this person has brightened the day of almost 3,000 students um, by posts from people's secret admirers. Somebody posted on this page about me, shocking. Really, I was shocked. <laughs> to that person, if you are sitting in the audience tonight, I am single and will be backstage after the commencement. <laughs> Just saying. I narrowed it down to a certain people, and I think they're here, so let's hope. <laughs> what inspired Sam Condon, a graduating biochemistry major, was the fact that he survived chemistry 201 his first semester. After that, he knew he could get through anything. What inspired Aaron Van Gorp, a graduating psychology major, were his interpersonal relationships with professors. These positive interactions reinforced his decision to become a professor in the future. From these examples, it is clear that many people, whether it be Serena Williams, professors, or other students, have inspired others to succeed. A while back, I heard this phrase, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. Live every day helping others, making as many people laugh as you can. 
You never know how important you may be to one person, especially if they are going through a difficult time. You may be the one person who inspires them to succeed. So supposedly as a meteorologist, I have heard that one of my tasks is to accurately forecast the future. So let's try it. <laughs> Whether you plan to find a job, already have a job, join the military, continue with school, or partake in a different endeavor, do your best at whatever you do. Only then will true success rightly follow. A wise teacher who will be on stage tonight once told me that perfection consists not in doing extraordinary things, but in doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. You do not have to be the next Bill Gates or Albert Einstein, but instead aim to be the next Hector Avalos, Serena Williams, or that awesome Jimmy John's delivery person, <laughs> who do ordinary things ridiculously well. You will all have specialized degrees very soon tonight. Let us all take those degrees and be the best we can be. And after that, let us all try to be a little better just because we can. Again, a very sincere congratulations to the class of 2013. Well, thank you very much, Josh. Also tonight, we have a representative of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences faculty here. Dr. Craig Ogilvie is a professor of physics in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, and he's also an assistant dean in the Graduate College. With his physics research, he tries to understand the universe just after the Big Bang, when it's filled with very hot fundamental particles such as quarks and gluons. And if you don't know what quarks and gluons are, Dr. Ogilvie or I would be happy to explain that to you <laughs> later. <laughs> Dr. Ogilvie also conducts learning research, particularly how to improve both student conceptual understanding and the ability to solve problems which are open-ended and not very clearly defined. The Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Maryland, which is a uh, funding agency and a major medical research institute, has recognized Dr. Ogilvie's passion to help students learn. He and his team received a grant from this agency, which helps ISU strengthen undergraduate and pre-college science and mathematics education. As part of the grant funding, Dr. Ogilvie is leading a program